Christmas in Bethlehem by Edwin S. Wallace. Read in English. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. During the Christmas season, when the thoughts of the civilized world turn to Bethlehem, many will wonder how the people there keep this greatest religious holiday very few american children can ever visit the little city among the judean hills yet a number of travelers from america and europe come to the holy land every year to be among those who are on christmas day crowd the streets of the little city nestled among its fig trees and olive orchards it is a little city and it does not take many people to crowd it but besides being the birthplace of jesus it is the birthplace of israel's great warrior king david bethlehem today has barely eight thousand inhabitants and in appearance is not attractive the streets are too narrow for vehicles in fact there is but one street in the town wide enough for carriages and it is so very narrow that they cannot pass each other in it the streets were made for foot travelers donkeys and camels bethlehem is about five miles south of jerusalem leaving the larger city by the jaffa gate we take a carriage and ride rapidly over the fine road built but a few years ago the carriage we are in and those we meet are wretched affairs the horses are to be pitied first because they are not well cared for and second because their drivers are regular jehus who drive them furiously up hill and down in less than an hour we are in the market-place of bethlehem in front of the church of the nativity let us suppose we have arrived on christmas eve in time to wander about and to become acquainted with the little city of course it has changed in appearance since the time of the birth of christ it is larger and better built now as then the houses are of stone and as cities and customs change but little in the east we may safely infer that modern bethlehem houses are much like those of nineteen hundred years ago perhaps some of the old buildings that were in existence so long ago may still be standing of course the great church of the nativity was not then erected nor were any of the large religious buildings we see these are the memorials of a later date built in honor of him whose earthly life began here one would have to be unmindful of his surroundings and very unimaginative not to wonder what the place was like on that night the anniversary of which we are celebrating we know that then as on this december twenty fourth it was filled with people but those people had come for a different purpose augustus caesar the master of the then known world had issued an imperial decree ordering a general registration of all his subjects this was for the purpose of revising or completing the tax lists according to roman law people were to register in their own cities that is the city in which they lived or to which their village or town was attached according to jewish methods they would register by tribes families and the houses of their fathers joseph and mary were jews and conformed to the jewish custom it was well known that he and mary were of the tribe of judah and family of david and that bethlehem was their ancestral home accordingly they left the nazareth home in the territory of zebulun and came to david's own city in the territory of judah they came down the east bank of the jordan crossed the river at jericho and came up among the judean hills and valleys till they reached bethlehem it was a long journey and a wearisome one and on arriving a place of rest was the first thing they sought evidently they had no friends living in the place or if they had their houses were already filled it was necessary that shelter be had and immediately in the khan or inn there was no room so there was nothing to do but occupy a part of the space provided for cattle 
it was not an unusual thing to do and is often done to-day in these eastern villages in fact they were about as comfortable there as in any khan at a khan one may procure a cup of coffee and a place to lie down on the floor but each guest provides his own bed and covering this was all joseph and mary could have obtained in the inn had there been room for them and here in bethlehem in a stable or a cave used for stabling animals jesus was born and mary wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger there is one short walk we should take before entering the church of the nativity and the cave beneath it this is to the field of the shepherds about a mile east of the church and the traditional place where the shepherds were watching their flocks on that momentous night this may not be the exact place where the angels appeared but there is no reason why we may not accept the tradition which has placed the event here it has often been wondered why the shepherds had their flocks out all night in the winter time and the wonder is easily satisfied when we know that these were not ordinary flocks of sheep nor ordinary shepherds these flocks were those specially selected for sacrifice in the temple at jerusalem at the great passover season and were kept in the fields all the year the shepherds were specially appointed some time during that winter night the shepherds were dazzled by a light more brilliant than the stars and roused by voices not of earth the christ whose future sacrifice their flocks were to symbolize was born and the angels were singing the good tidings these shepherds were the first to hear and to spread the marvelous news because of the event the angels were heralding men have built the great church of the nativity in bethlehem and indeed all the great christian churches and cathedrals of the world it is because of this that people from every country in europe and america will join the throng of native christians in the city of the nativity and rejoice in memory of the angel's song it is because of this that there is to-day so much of peace on earth and goodwill toward men and now we return in time to see the procession of bishops priests and people that is forming in the square in front of the church each is dressed in his most gorgeous robes turkish soldiers line both sides of the street to keep the way open for the procession to pass the latin patriarch of jerusalem has just arrived the procession of priests carrying banners and immense candles meets him then turns and all go into the latin chapel through the main entrance following we are surprised to find the main entrance so small it can admit but one at a time and that one must stoop to enter from the masonry it can be seen that the entrance was once much larger the reason for the change was that the mohammedans at one time did all in their power to injure and annoy the christians and even used to ride on horseback into the very church the door therefore was made small to protect the church from this sacrilege once inside we see we are in a very ancient structure part of the masonry dates from the time of constantine who built a magnificent basilica on this site about the year three hundred thirty of our era all we can see of the oldest work however probably dates from not later than justinian's time about five hundred fifty a d in any case the church is a venerable building and it has witnessed some stirring scenes in it baldwin the crusader was crowned king of jerusalem it has been repaired a number of times and once when it needed a new roof king edward the fourth of england gave the lead to make one this was about the year fourteen hundred eighty two the lead roof did good service for about two hundred years and might have lasted much longer had not the mohammedans melted it up to make bullets however another roof was soon provided inside the building consists of a nave and double aisles the aisles are separated by two rows of columns made of red limestone these columns have plain bases and are surmounted by corinthian capitals they are nineteen feet high 
and at the top of each a cross is engraved the church is now owned by the latin greek and armenian christians religious services will be held all night in the latin chapel of st catherine at midnight a solemn mass will be said by the patriarch of jerusalem the chapel is full of people many of whom are sitting on the floor before the procession descends into the grotto of the nativity we make our way there so as to have a better view originally it was simply a natural cave in the limestone rock now little of the native rock is seen marble slabs cover the floor and line the walls the ceiling which is about ten feet high is resplendent with thirty-two brass lamps their light enables us to examine the many pictures portraying scenes in the life of jesus which the devotion of christians has hung about the walls but these pictures are generally very poor as specimens of art at the east end of the cave there is a small recess in the rock before which hang fifteen lamps in the floor of this recess a bright silver star is inlaid it is nearly all worn away by the constant kissing it receives around the star is an inscription in latin which tells us that here of the virgin mary jesus christ was born turning just a little to the right from this place of the star and descending a few steps we are in a small chamber called the grotto of the manger the original manger is of course not here it probably never was preserved and many stories about it are inventions of a much later date here also is a little altar or the place where the wise men from the east prostrated themselves before the infant jesus these three the places of the birth the manger and the adoration are all in what is called the chapel of the nativity passing out of this chapel by the steps leading into the greek church of st mary we are again in the streets of bethlehem it is a relief to get away from the glare of lamps the smoke of candles and the heavy odors of burning incense and to breathe again the fresh air blowing over the judean hills the streets are very quiet for all not in the church have retired to their homes occasionally people leave the church and are driven away in their carriages to jerusalem though most visitors remain all night we can wander through the streets and over the neighboring hills for the clear moon makes it almost as bright as day how peaceful it all is indeed it seems a most suitable place for the coming to the world of the prince of peace faint streaks of the dawn are beginning to show in the sky above the hills of moab rapidly they grow longer and brighter and soon it is daybreak and we know that it is christmas in bethlehem but we miss much of the accustomed joy of the day at home there would be good cheer the companionship of loved ones and the giving and receiving of gifts here there is little of this the home life of the people is so different from ours christmas day in bethlehem is not the christmas day we know it is full of religious ceremonies and when these are over young and old go back to their accustomed life the faces of the boys and girls i saw in bethlehem last christmas were not such faces as i should have seen in any city or village in america and i knew the reason it was because christmas to them was much the same as any other day of the year and so it requires more than bethlehem to make christmas what we like to have it it requires loving home life and the presence of the spirit of the christ child in the heart and yet who would not be glad to spend one christmas eve and day where he who made the glad day possible was born end of christmas in bethlehem by edwin s wallace read by betty b